In this video, we're going to discuss how to stay current as a cloud architect or an enterprise architect. Now staying current as a cloud architect is gonna be something that's gonna be really important to you. And it's gonna be important for two reasons. One is on every cloud architect interview or enterprise architect interview, one of the things people always ask you is how do you stay current? Now that's one of the reasons because it usually shows up on an interview. But more importantly, when we work as a cloud architect, when we work as an enterprise architect, so much of our job is non-technical. And when it comes down to it, you know, 75 plus percent of our time is spent facilitating meetings, managing stakeholders, giving presentations, creating architectural roadmaps, performing impact assessments, leading uh, architecture teams, maintaining architecture repositories. And so much of it is on the business side or the tech business side. So it's very easy to lose our technical knowledge if we are not careful. So we have to stay current because if we don't, we'll lose our capabilities. But the other reason it's so important is that uh, our competitive advantage as an architect is how can we improve our client's business? Same thing for an enterprise architect. And the technology is one of our tools. So the better aware we are of new technology developments, uh, we can think about how those new technology developments can impact po our clients in a positive manner. And obviously we have to include the people on the processes along with the technology, but the better our technology edge is, the more sharp we are, we know on new technologies and what they can do and how they can work, the greater the tools we have to drive transformation. So we need to stay current, we need to stay up to date. So I'm gonna talk about how I've stayed current over the last 25 years in various uh, IT architect roles like network architect uh, or, or enterprise architect. Now, the first part of staying current, honestly, is just mastering your fundamentals. And I say this because when your fundamentals are very strong, they're gonna be part of you and it's really hard to forget them. 25 years ago, I learned how to practice internal medicine and I still don't really forget any of it because it was such hard schooling and such tough education that I still remember the majority of it. But if it was something that I learned casually that it did, that wasn't like an overwhelming learning experience, I probably would have not. So. The key is when your fundamentals are really strong, you tend to remember them a little better. And the better part of having good fu fundamentals is most new technologies are actually just new versions of an old technology. So when you look at a technology and you say, ah, I've seen it before. For example, in 1998, I had configured IPsec encryption over a private line. And about two years ago, three years ago now, AWS had a big press release. We now allow IPsec over a direct connection, which is a private line. And it would have felt new if I didn't know about it, you know, over 25 years ago. But the reality was it was just a new version of the old thing. And many technologies are just like that. So that's one thing. And then when your fundamentals are good, you'll be better off. Another thing that I tend to do is I tend to read trade publications, but I look for trade publications that are the business oriented side of tech because my days of being an engineer are over as an architect. For me, it's the tech strategy and what the tech can do for the business. So I tried always to at least read uh, CIO magazine or and business week. I tended to read the economist and that always gave me those three. It typically gave me a good perspective of a lot of what was going on. Now, the reality is when you work as a cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, you're already at a lot of conferences, most likely. So go to these conferences if you're not in one of these roles. And if you are in one of these roles, try to attend some conferences where you're not actually speaking and working. And while you're there, attend some of the sessions, attend things that are taught by industry experts and leaders of your field, ideally not from the vendor side uh, at a conference. And that way you're going to get a good perspective of things that are actually going on. Now, at these conferences, obviously, you're going to network with other people and you're going to talk to other people and you're going to also be able to see what they're doing, which brings us into networking. And I'm not talking about IP networking, which is really, you know, near and dear to my heart because I love networking, but we're actually talking about building a real professional network. 
create your little architecture team. I know I have my team and there are people that you could just call if you've got an architecture question. And talk to them periodically. For example, David Lithicum and I constantly talk about various cloud and enterprise architectures because he either hears or is seeing them. I might reach out to a Russ White, for example, who's part of my personal architecture team and say, uh, what do you think about this? And that way, when you've got a network of professional architects and other experts in the field that you've developed over decades, or, or you'll actually always be able to communicate with them. So you're going to conferences, you're you're, you're, not, you're working with other people, your fundamentals are strong, you're reading trade publications, which brings me to my favorite thing, books. I just love books, I just do. Uh, so, you know, in college I read uh, three, well, actually throughout my years from between uh, early college and I'd say for the first 10 years of my architecture career, I read at least three books per week. And the key with the book is you can typically get something that's a good source of information. It's, if it's going to be published by a major publishing house, they typically have checked the credibility of the author. So when you look at these books, you can track the credibility and the source. Plus, you can carry a book with you anywhere you want. You can read two pages, put it down between phone calls, read another two pages. I don't know. Books are just big to me. So I like books. And, you know, you can find really good books like David Lithicum recently published an Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. That's an architect with decades of experience posting their experience in cloud architecture. So that's the kind of book that I tend to get because it's very critical. Likewise, you know, Russ White wrote an incredible number of books that helped me early in my networking career for for example, as did uh, Bassam Halabi and uh, Ivan Peplinajak, again, put good books out there. So look for experts that are writing books and kind of do those same things. So it's not that hard to stay, Karen. If your fundamentals are really strong, that's going to be 50% of it. It really is. And that way, most new techs are just new versions of the old thing. Like the Who song, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. So that's one way you'll stay current and keep your technical knowledge. But beyond that, read your trade publications, go to conferences, network with other architects, and uh, read you know really good books and keep them there. And you should stay current as a cloud architect. If you're looking to become a cloud architect, or you're looking to become an enterprise architect, or a security architect, or you're looking to get promoted in your architecture career, join us in a free webinar. We hold one every Thursday. The link to these webinars in the description of the video. We'll go over the roles of the architect. We'll talk about what hiring managers are actually looking for. We'll talk to you about how to bypass HR so you don't get auto-rejected when you lack experience, and you can go straight to the hiring manager and show them that you're ready for the job. And these uh, webinars, they're completely free. Uh, they're on Zoom, so we can, you can ask questions, we'll answer them, we'll do anything we can to help you in your architecture career. So sign up for a free webinar, the link is in the description. Now also in the descriptions are guides on how to win the interview, for example, or how to become a cloud architect, or how to become an enterprise architect, or how to become an AI architect, or uh, certification guides on the kind of certifications that are best for your architecture career. Check them out, they're completely free in the description of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, maybe give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your cloud architect career, or enterprise architect career, security architect career, AI architect career, or any architect career for that matter. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you soon.